Hello first time coders. The objective of today's video is to teach you how to read error messages in Jupyter Notebook. Here is an example of a code. So in this code we have uh, x equal to 10 and then we try multiplying x by z. So in this case, we will get a, uh, an error because z is unknown, right? So if we execute this, we have an error. The name of the error is name error. And you can see uh, the error message with a lot of jargons. So uh, let's see what this error message is trying to tell us. So if you look at the error message closely, you would see that we have the name of the error. Okay, so this is just telling us the type of error that we had. Uh, sorry, the name uh, of the error. Okay, now if you look at, if you look closely, you would see some numbers here. These are the line numbers. These are the line numbers. So it, they allow you to easily find the location of the error. And you can see a green arrow, which tells you the location of the error. So this gives us the location of the error. So now we know that the error is happening in this line. And the, na the number of the line is uh, line two. Okay. At the end, you can see the further explanation of what the error really is. So in this example, we can see that we are having uh, an error a name error and the name z is not defined so that means the 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 name of this variable z has not been defined or um, or has not been uh, initialized earlier in the code so we can easily come here sorry so we can easily come here and then we can write uh, maybe modify this and say z equal to uh, float to convert whatever input we get from the user to float uh, you can notice some uh, pop-up coming out uh, these are just explanations of uh, uh, the functions that i'm using you can enable this through your uh, Jupyter Notebook extensions, okay? So we can say input, uh, and then we put the message so that the user can understand what we want him to input. So if you run this, you can get, um, So let's give the uh, value of z because we have already assigned mm -hmm. x. So let's give the value of z. So if we multiply 20 by, uh, by 10, we get uh, 200. One awesome thing with uh, Jupyter Notebook and Python in general is that uh, you can also run the uh, the uh, sorry the the, the error uh, the syntax error can also show you uh, its lineage meaning uh, from which function did it enter to which function and so on and so forth 
So for example, if I run this and I give it values, so what this code does is uh, how functions work, you can check our introduction to functions is that it will just identify, yeah, there is a function here and then it continues to line five. It starts executing line five where we give it H and M and it calls energy which is our function that it saw in the beginning of the line. So it runs this and it tries to multiply m by h. We have given it m and h, but g is nowhere to be found. So we expect this to give us an error. Um, however, if there is no error, it will return e and we'll get the value of e inside energy and we can print energy. So if you look at the error message, you can see that uh, this error message is showing us um, first it's showing us that there is an error which starts from line uh, which starts from line 12 so what you do is you 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 go to the last uh, error message uh, which is which is this one you go to the last error message and you can see from here that the error is has uh, has started from uh, uh, the error is in line two sorry so we know that the error location of the error so we know that the error is in line two but what is the error uh what is the error message uh, the error message is a name sorry the error type is name error right so it's a name error which means we have made a mistake in the name of something uh, so we can come down at the bottom and we'll see that uh, we have not defined g okay another good thing we can do is that apart from knowing the name we can know which function called this function so you can see that uh, in this line in this line we have the original function that did the calling that originally line seven made the call so line seven called energy and then somewhere inside energy we had an error in line two so that's why you see it showing an arrow in line seven as well as showing an arrow in line two similarly if you have a function calling a function calling a function you will get the same issue so for example, if we have, uh, let's say define main and we make all of this a function, all right? And then here we call main. So if you run this and you give your values, Now, if you look at the error message, we are expected to see how many arrows? Three, you guessed it. So if you look at the message, you can see that we have, so from this, you can see what, what this is telling us is that when the code came, it started executing this line. That's why we have line 11. Line 11 then called a function, which is the main, so this function is this one and it says that then th line 8 is the one that allows us to exit this function and enter uh, sorry not exit to jump into the other function so um, which is this one 
right? So, uh, and then the arrow happened here. So you should always go to the last arrow, which is showing you that line two is the source, is the original source of the error. All these other lines that are trying to confuse you are just simply trying to help you know that, that the whole story, that the problem started when main called uh, the function main, and then when energy called the function energy, and then in line two, the arrow occurred. You can get information about the arrow names because you, uh, the, the, even if you don't know the error, at least you get an explanation here. If you need more explanation, feel free to uh, check um, this website I found. I will leave the link in the description or just Google it. Just type uh, error types in Python and it will show you the error, the different error messages and the description of what they mean. So next time you run your uh, Python code in the lab, you don't have to wait for the instructor to help you out with your error messages. Thank you for listening and see you next time.